Welcome. In this video, we will learn how to set up the basic settings in the Employee Leave Manager Excel template. For more information about the features of this template, please visit the video description below where I will provide a link to the specific product page as well as the intro video that will go over the different features of this template. Now let's get started. When you open the Excel template for the first time, you will see that there is a info sheet which will provide you important useful links that I recommend definitely visiting to learn more about the template. Now in this video, we're going to focus on settings. So we go to the settings sheet and this is how your template will look like when you have just downloaded it from inzara.com. The first thing we're going to do is to set up the leave types. So by default, there are these three leave types. Totally, you can enter up to 12 different leave types. And for example, if I want to rename vacation as something else, I'm just going to click on that and then change it to something else. Or if I like vacation, I can edit that this way. And then we have sick leave, medical leave. And let's say I want to do another one called personal. Then I add it to the next cell. So basically row seven and hit tab and you'll see that now automatically it's given a color. We cannot change the color directly here, but the color will be automatically chosen and applied in the upcoming reports and dashboards automatically by the template. The next thing you can do is to set up whether you want to track the balance of this leave type. So for example, let's say I want to do training as a leave type where I want to track employees who are actually on training for the company. So it's big, it's, they are working for the company. So it is not a leave. However, I want to track it because they're not going to be available for regular work. I don't want them to be having their leave balance deducted, but I still want them to be shown as in training and hence not available for regular work so that I can plan my capacity properly. So in that case, all you have to do is to just set this leave type to no for balance tracking. So essentially any leave type that you do not want the employee to have reduced balance, then you just choose no. Otherwise, just leave it as blank. Automatically balance will be tracked. And then uh, if you do no, it will set that specific leave type to be not tracked for balance. So you can add more up to 12 leave types and you can set any of them to be no if you don't want them to track. So that's the first thing, leave types. The second, weekends. So weekends will not be counted against your leave balance. So for example, uh, in this case, I have set Sunday and Saturday to be true, meaning weekends. And hence, if an employee takes a leave from Friday to Tuesday, then what happens is the Saturday, Sunday in between will not be counted as leave because it's a weekend day. So the employee will only have leave days as Friday, then Monday and Tuesday. So three days of leave instead of five days. So that's the purpose of the weekend. So you can choose whatever days are weekends in your organization by just setting this to true or false. So if I do this as false, that means only Saturday is a weekend day in my company. So now the third part of setting up the basic settings is holidays. Holidays work similarly to the weekends. Basically, they will not count against your leave balance. So if you take a leave that spans across a holiday date, you will not lose your leave balance for that holiday, specific holiday date. So you can enter any number of holidays. So in this case, by default, there is one day. But if I want to add more days, then all I have to do is to go to the immediately following cell. And then I can type in May 1st, hit tab, and then I can type in the specific, the name for the holiday. This is just for your purpose. And um, you can enter any number of such days in this holidays table. 
you can see that as soon as I typed in the table expanded to come over here, that means it is now counted as a holiday date. You can continue to enter for consecutive years. There's no limit. So if you start using this in 2019 and then you use it again in 2020, then you will just have to keep adding new holiday dates for the next year. You don't have to worry about editing it. You will just keep adding the holiday dates to the same table. Now in the next video, we will learn how we can set up the reporting period and entitlement setup. Entitlement would be how many days of leave are allowed for an employee. So we can set those up for your organization settings.